How's it guys? I'm Grant Smith and welcome to another Snake ID episode. Today our featured snake is the Scarp Steerker. In the last video that I did, we did the Slug Eater, which is a relatively easy snake to ID if you know what you're looking for. Today we're going to step it up a little bit and do the Spotted Scarp Steerco, which can be a little bit more tricky to ID because there's quite a few other snakes that have some very similar features, so that can make things a little bit confusing. I also today have a challenge for you guys, and that is that I'm going to show you four different snakes when we start. Then I'm going to go through the video and I'm going to show you the key things to look out for when IDing a, a scarp steerker and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you those four images again and then I want you to answer in the comments which one out of those four pictures you think is the scarp steerker and then we can see how well you've, you've learned. So just a little fact before we start, the scarp steerker's name directly translates into sheep stab or sheep stinger and the snake was thought to be responsible for the death of a lot of sheep but the snake is a very mild venom it's of no consequence to man and there's no way that it could actually kill any kind of large mammal like that and so it is thought that the scarp stick was probably the snake that was seen more often but that if there were any kind of livestock deaths on a property it was more likely due to another more venomous snake. The scarp stick is a really interesting and quite a striking looking snake they diurnal, so they're active during the day, and they're quite active and they're quite shy. So more often than not, if you ever see a scarp steerker, you're only going to get a fleeting glimpse of the snake either bolting through the bush or crossing the road really quickly. And it's quite rare that you'll actually have an opportunity to be able to stop and watch the snake. So that can make identification a little bit tricky, but there will be occasions when you do get a picture of the snake. That'll really help is to actually snap a photo or if you look very closely for these few features that I'm about to tell you, then you might be able to pick up one that you've memorized distinctly that will lead you towards that ID. Of course, it's always better to use a combination of features because those combinations will eliminate all the other snakes that it could be. So that being said, let's have a look at some of the snakes that could be confused with the scarp steerker. Here's four different snakes. One of these is a scarp steerker, three of them aren't. And it, as you can see, superficially, it can be quite confusing. There's a lot of very similar kind of blotchy patterns here. There's little markings all over the place. They're all snakes, so they all look like snakes. That can make it quite difficult to actually pull apart which features you should look for to distinguish this snake. But that's why we're here today, and that's what I'm going to help you with. I'm pretty sure, and I hope that by the end of this video, you're going to be able to choose the one of those four snakes and tell me in the comments, which one of those is the scarp steerker. So let's get into it. Number one, rhombic markings. All of the snakes in that image to some degree that I showed you have some form of rhombic markings. But the scarp steerker is slightly different in that the rhombic markings, which are the spots running along the body, it's got spots running along the side and along the top. Those markings are quite irregular and if you look at some of the images together, you'll actually see that those markings are quite different to the others. Some of the markings are quite uniform. The others are kind of pull to the side or maybe more stripe like and in the scarp steerker those markings are generally they can be blotchy but more often than not especially close to the center of the body you'll see that they actually start to fuse almost like two hexagonal patterns joined onto each other they almost fuse as they're running down and as they get towards the end of the tail it actually they all fuse together completely to form a stripe number two the red stitches. This is a distinct feature of scarp steerker, but it's not a very easy one to actually see. The only way that you're really going to notice this is if you've got a good photograph of the side of the body, and sometimes it might not even be there. It'll be very faint that you can almost not see it, and sometimes it'll be quite pronounced. This feature is this reddish pink, almost like blotchy stitches that run sometimes from the bottom of the throat, but they usually run along the sides of the body in and amongst the, the rhombic blotches on the side of the body and they kind of interspersed along there and if you're able to spot those, if you're able to notice that in the snake that you're looking at then that immediately will tell you that it's not any of the other snakes that I showed you in the image and that it's a scarp sticker. So that's quite a tricky one to look for but that is something that is definitely there in a lot of the snakes and if you can spot that and you also notice the fusing blotches 
then you're well on your way to knowing exactly what that snake is. Number three, head shield. So this is another feature that distinguishes the scarp zirka from many of the other snakes, including some of the whip and the sand snakes that might look similar in shape and also in behavior. The color on the head is uniform over the entire head and looks almost like a head shield. And that can be a coppery color, it can be an olivey color, brownish color. The color is not really important. What is important is that there's no other defined patterns within that. It's a plain uniform color. And in most of the other snakes you'll have some kind of markings or that coloration will be broken up a little bit. So that uniform head shield is a really good indicator because two of the other snakes in our little quiz image don't have that uniform color at all. One of them does slightly but it's not it's not as clear as with the scarp sterica. So that really is one of the key things that if you can spot that straight away you're well on your way to IDing the snake. And then the, the fourth thing is the face mask. So this again is a unique feature of the scarp sterica. So just behind the head, at the back of the, right at the back behind that uniform head shield, you've got this, this collar. It's a collar that runs all the way through the eyes of the snake. It almost looks like a face mask that's on backwards and it runs straight through the eyes round to the back of the head. Sometimes at the back it might not be fused, but more often than not it is fused and it runs slightly down the back of the spine. That's really another awesome way to really pick out, even if you're just seeing the snake for a moment, is to pick out that dark collar. Because that, that collar is something that can immediately differentiate it from the other four snakes that we're looking at in this video, but also most of the other snakes that we get in the Western Cape. Right, so let's recap those four main things. You've got your rhombic markings running down the back, which is similar to the other snakes, but in the scarp sterica, they're fused in a hexagonal shape some of the times in some parts of the body. Then you've got the red stitches that run down the flanks of the body. Then you've got the head shield and the black collar. That head shield and black collar is really a good one to look out for because it's something that you can pick up in a moment or with a single photograph. You know, you might not be able to pick up some of the other features. It might become a bit of a blur, especially if it's moving quickly. But if you can see that solid color, and the black collar, then it's a really good indication that you're looking at a scarp sterica. Right guys, and that's a scarp sterica for you. It's a really striking looking snake. It's quite active. It's got these really cool features that you can look out for that you can use to eliminate the other snakes out of the equation and to determine exactly what the snake is. It's quite fast moving. It only possesses a mild venom that is of no consequence to people. It's not a snake that you necessarily want to handle if you find it because Different people have different reactions to venoms, just like some people are allergic to bee stings. So I don't recommend picking the snake up if you do find it, but it's not a snake that you need to be concerned about in any way. The venom is definitely not life-threatening, and for the most part, the snake won't even strike or try to bite you, especially, of course, just like with all snakes, if you leave it alone. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. If you're finding this ID series useful at all, please hit that like button so that I know and in the comment section below, let me know which one of these four snakes is the snake that we've been IDing today, and that's a Scarpsteaker. Until next time.